my name's Shannon. Hi, I'm Leela. And for our first tutorial today, we're going to be going over how you can create your own hypoxia chamber. Inducing hypoxia is when you lower the concentration of oxygen in the air. Conducting experiments about what happens to an object or specimen when under induced hypoxia is applicable to all kinds of research projects, from those revolving around aeronautics to more biology-oriented ones. This video will go over how you can create your own self-contained module in which you can monitor the oxygen concentrations within in real time, as well as be able to see the experiment taking place. There are a few things to note before watching this video. One is that this method can only lower your oxygen concentrations to a minimum around 15%. The whole process revolves around a candle burning out the oxygen in the air, and the candle actually puts itself out around 15% oxygen concentration. This being said, it still allows for around 6% change in the concentration, which can generate significant effects in a multitude of experiments. Do some research beforehand to see if these constraints work with your desired experiment. The other thing to mention is that most of the materials that we're going to be using are not specific. You could use a different type of pan, sensor, candle, software, it really doesn't matter. Just follow the main design principles. Make sure that you have your environment properly sealed before you begin experimentation. Have a way to monitor the oxygen concentration within the environment, have a place to put your candle, and a way to put out the candle when you need with all the preliminary stuff done, let's go over all the materials you'll need. Firstly, you'll want an aluminum pan of any size. You'll also need some unscented tea light candles that aren't taller than the height of the pan itself, along with matches to light the candles. For covering the pan, you'll also need aluminum foil and plastic wrap. Finally, you'll just need duct tape, scissors, some water, and a few plastic pipettes. In order to record the oxygen levels within the environment, we used a Vernier O2 gas sensor with GoLink USB sensor interface, Logger Pro software, and a computer. You can use any combination of compatible sensor and software, so as long as you have a way of measuring the oxygen concentrations, your school will more than likely have an instrument available for you to use, because these sensors are expensive and you don't want to buy them yourself, but they're typically standard for a biology or chemistry laboratory to have. Just talk to your teachers and figure out where you can borrow one. Now that you've gathered all the materials, you want to set down your aluminum pan on a flat surface. Place your candle inside to make sure that there's a sufficient gap between the top of the pan and the wick of the candle. Then, take the plastic wrap and stretch it across the pan. Make sure that the plastic wrap goes over the edges so that there's enough room to tape it all down. Cut off the required length of plastic wrap and apply the duct tape as necessary so that it is sealed down tightly. That being said, you want to make it so that the duct tape is able to be removed later on. You want to have access into the pan so you can place the candle in your experiment inside. With the plastic wrap sealed down, take your pair of scissors and cut a small square out of the plastic wrap in one of the corners. This is where you're going to put your candle. It can be anywhere in the pan, but placing it in the corner is the easiest thing to do. Take a sheet of aluminum foil and cut out a piece that is slightly larger than the area of the square you cut out. It's important to note at this point you should probably put your candle in the pan. I would recommend putting a small piece of adhesive on the bottom, so just tape, so that way the candle doesn't move around when you move the pan. Now you can tape the aluminum foil over the plastic wrap, but leave a small section of it without any adhesive holding it down. This is where you'll take your small plastic pipette and insert it in between where the aluminum foil and the plastic wrap meet, so that the dropper is able to reach inside the pan. You don't need to tape this part down until you actually begin your experiment, but it helps to leave it there for now so you don't lose the place of the opening. Now you should cut out another piece of the plastic wrap. Again, this hole can go anywhere, but I would recommend placing it in the corner opposite to where your candle will go. Also, because of the shape and design of this particular oxygen sensor, putting it in the corner straight up allows for it to be able to lean up against the side without falling over. Once you get it in a good place, tape it down around the plastic wrap, making sure to seal it well. Good job, you have all your presets done. Now it's time to move on to what you'll actually be doing on the day of the experiment. If you're using a computer instead of a laptop for data collection, be sure to move your module to a clear space beside it. And don't forget to wear any goggles or protective equipment necessary. First is, if you haven't already done so, place your candle in the pan. And most importantly, make sure that it's underneath the aluminum cover. Placing the candle there is important because the whole reason we put the aluminum there in the first place is so that the flame from your candle doesn't melt a hole in the plastic wrap. Next, take the objects or specimens you want to place inside the environment and put them anywhere in the pan. Just try not to place them too close to the sensor or the candle. Connect your oxygen sensor to your laptop or computer and bring up the corresponding software. We used LogiPro software with the Vernier O2 gas sensor. 
As long as the sensor is working properly and your specimens are in place, then you can remove your pipette from the opening and fill it with some water. Once full, insert it back into the opening and seal it down with tape. While you do want it to be sealed fully, make sure you are also able to move the pipette back and forth. This is so that your pipette doesn't melt, but when the time comes to put the candle out, you can move the pipette over the flame and dispense the water. This is an example of what you do not want to happen to your pipette. Now comes the time to light the candle. With the candle burning, take a bunch of tape and seal down the cover as best as you possibly can. Try your best not to leave any openings, as this will cause problems when trying to keep the oxygen levels stable. Watch as your O2 sensor begins to show a very gradual decrease in oxygen concentration. At this point, it's just a matter of waiting for the oxygen concentration to drop to your desired level, and then you can put out your candle simply by pushing the pipette so that it's directly above the candle's flame and adding a few drops of water to it. With the candle's flame put out, you can quickly remove the pipette and seal down the opening with a piece of tape. As you'll notice by reading your oxygen sensor, assuming that you sealed everything down nicely, your oxygen concentration should remain stable with barely any fluctuation. And there you have it, a simple, low-cost, reusable method to induce hypoxia for our physical and life sciences experiments. We hope that this was able to help you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. For more resourceful ways to create high-quality research projects on a low budget, check out our other videos on our channel. And finally, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye!